Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're gonna be discussing a different type of plasma system build. This one is unique in that I've never built a system to support this torch height control system and the, con the actual client contracted me to do it for an Albert Price torch height control system. Now, for those of you who are into plasma and have not checked out Albert Price, um, his units are available on eBay. I myself personally have never tested his units. However, I have had clients um, now are moving over to him and are saying they're very, very good. Um, um, when I was building the system, I did contact Albert and he was very quick to respond. Once again, keep in mind, he is based in Ireland. And that being said, you're on the European time zone for him to reply back. Um, so just keep that in mind. But overall, um, this particular client um, found that his system was really interesting, did some research and requested me to build the system to support it. That being said, I've explained explicitly that there is no such thing as a cookie cutter system. Um, every system is different and every system is unique to your specific application. That being said, we've got a lot more going on on this type of particular plasma and I'm going to show you that when we go inside the unit. One of the big things I want to cover really quick that you're going to notice is the amount of graphic design that I did to support the system because I wanted this client to understand <clears throat> how to connect everything um, to, as best as possible because there is a lot going on with plasma systems. You're dealing with dry contact relays which we have the GX16 port right here which also features the moisture cover. Um, again it is a three point GX16 connector. The thing to keep in mind is that only two of these pins are actually uh, used for the dry contact relay. The third pin is used as ground. Over here again we have a DB9 connector and the, um, one of the most interesting things about this plasma set setup is the fact that that DB9 is virtually used all the way throughout. All the, all the pins on that are used between the inputs from the G540 and the outputs required to go to the ABHC 10 unit to support Albert's unit. So now what I'm going to do is show you the inside of the system and just show you how um, how busy it is actually in there. We have a lot of things going on. So the first thing I want to point out is I allocated all of the pin output settings on his DB9 connector. And the main reason I did that is because, again, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We've got pin 1 DB9. You can see we've got V-negative terminal splitter. And then over here, 48 volt power supply. Uh, his DB9 to support the AVHC-10 has an anti-dive feature. We are using 48 volts to power that. Of course, the higher the voltage, the less EMI susceptibility you have. So that just makes logical sense to do. Did the relay graphic to break down. If he ever has to service his relay, he just turns the system and matches the diagram right there. Gave him another re uh, diagram right here so he understands exactly how the GX16 3 pin is connected. If he ever has to service that. Disconnected, I should say. Um, and again, coming into the box, when we start analyzing inside, you can see that we went with an over-under on my terminal splitters. This unit is interesting because it's using a positive terminal splitter along with a negative terminal splitter. Remember, your power supply guys only have three outputs typically. Okay. Now, when you require more actual connections to those outputs and you can, can't support them with the power supply, proper or I should say best practice, is always to split the signals. You never want to daisy chain. Nothing in here is daisy chained. Everything here is smooth, concise, and again, circle ring connectors which lock into position because they are a full circle. They do not, they're not fork connectors, okay? But once again, solder heat shrink and flux was used on every connection. You can see that the graphic right here is explaining that he has a 48 volt terminal splitter on top. 48 volt terminal splitter on the bottom. We used a nylon set, a nylon standoff to separate the two. You've got right here your uh, thumb screws, so you, everything is toolessly mounted for the relay as well as the terminal splitter, so we can service easily. Coming over here, let's see. You can see the DB9 connector, and these are just the the leads on the opposite side. Here's the ground lead, the green. And then coming on this side, let's see if I can get a light in there. You can see that everything is being used. All of those leads are going right into that DB9. As we pan over, just to make sure you guys understand how everything is properly shielded, tin braided copper, you can see it right there, run to the base of the unit. That's covering all of his input and output signals. So again, he's got the cleanest possible signals he can have. You can see that the ground lead, once again, is over here, as it should be, and that grounds out right to the base or actually right to the tin braided copper which is down there and that tin braided copper being it's making contact with the enclosure grounds everything out nice and neat okay so coming over here you can see all those multiple leads coming off 
get them properly wire tied. Guys, just so you know, when I tell you that I really cover all the details, all of my cable that I use other than the 16 gauge is silicone. I love silicone because it's maximum flexibility and on top of that, it's got the highest heat resistance you'll find. You can see here we have ferrites going on our actual signal cable to the relay. Keep that signal as clean as possible. It goes all the way back to the G540. We have four of them installed. And then uh, over here again, as you come back, like I said, you can definitely see all the wires were done properly. The e-stop, of course, Tim Brady Copper, properly base grounded to the power supply. And as we come to the front of the system, I'm going to just turn this around real quick. Just give me a second. Because this is where more graphics are done exclusively. Okay. You can see there's a lot of work right here. Okay. This right here is a DB9 connector. And what I did was I designed it so that the same DB9 Pro Sotilus that's used on my motors, the beauty of these is they can be used to split signals as well. Now with the AVHC 10 unit from Albert, he requires uh, multiple, actually eight actual wire connections in order to have this unit plugged in. Now I have a choice, like you have a choice. If you're building your own system, you're going to realize really quick, am I going to put all these different um, ports in the back of the system and then I might need a bigger enclosure or if I use a multi-input a multi type connector like uh, a DB9, again as long as the voltage is low enough, you're fine to use. Again, voltage and amperage I should say. Um, once again, that's exactly what I chose to do here. Using the DB9 Pro Sotilus, he's able to connect this connector. Of course, I'm including it in the system. He's able to connect it to Albert Price's uh, cable that came with his unit, and that splits out all the signals. So one actual plug then just plugs in. And number one, it keeps the DB9s all symmetrical to the system because the Gecko itself uses DB9 connectors. And then on top of that, it makes the system super easy to service with the diagram once again right here. I also explained to him about the 12 volt power supply. Uh, I'm including up the 12 volt power supply so it'll power his actual AVHC 10, which is the digital interface from Albert. Um, the main reason that is, is that 48 volts is, is not supported, which most of them will not support because of the voltage is so high. The anti-dive feature goes up to 50 volts, so you're going golden there. Um, but overall, you can see how the diagrams all make sense. Uh, price THC cable wiring diagram, once again, blue wire torch up, green wire arc OK, and then the brown wires torch down. And then I told him the inputs that are set up for the G540. So when he breaks this down and he unboxes this, he's basically got all the information he needs to do exactly what he needs to do. Okay, That's the way, in my eyes, you guys should be set up with complex systems like this. This is not a system that, once again, is under the norm. And that's why I say when you see all this stuff going on, all the grounding features, um, the GX16, I don't even know if I showed you that, but the GX16 is properly grounded right here. Um, you can see it's, it's done on the um, toolless terminal for the actual relay. And once again, when you see everything, right down to lock washers being installed on all the ring connectors, then you can really see exactly what's going on and how it's set up. And when I hear guys tell me sometimes that they don't have enough room in their enclosure as far as how to set everything, this really breaks down how you can use a 12 by 12 by 4 inch enclosure and really get the maximal amount of capacity. Not only that, if need be, you still could support actually installing another relay if you required virtually anywhere he likes over here. You know, the G540 does support two, in which case in this system, he would not be able to do that only because the AVHC 10 requires an output too for the anti-dive feature. So other than that though, like I said, if you're servicing, everything is here. Of course, shielded cable must be used for system integration, a very important sticker. Um, but again, you guys now have full gravity of understanding when a new system comes into me as far as how to do a, an integrated system build, I try to do it to where you guys have all of the required information. These are not easy systems when it comes to design, mainly because there's so many different things going on. And every manufacturer of a torch height control system, they will have different requirements. So that being said, again, this is a dry contact relay format. You can always do a wet contact too, and that's where you're actually uh, running power to the relay. Um, depending on if you're turning on like a spindle, another accessory, these are things to keep in mind. So again, I hope this video has been interesting, at least giving you guys ideas if you are designing your own. Um, if you're interested in the Albert Price unit, you can see exactly that the G540 does support it. Um, and again, 
I say contact them if you guys are interested or you want to find out more about it. Either way, uh, this system, I know that the client will be happy with. It's done correctly. And again, it's done so you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, can easily support the unit yourselves. And that's, I think, what needs to be done because more and more as I'm getting called every day or getting requests for calls every day, I'm getting asked about, you know, how can I get in touch with this vendor? They built me a system and I really have no idea. Um, even what's really interesting is older systems. I'm finding it even on older systems, there's a lot of writing. The, the manufacturers take the time to put tons of writing on, whether it be for stepper motors, whether it be for you know part numbers. No one takes the time to really put labeling. I, I very rarely see stepper motors that actually are labeled properly for their wiring. It's just not, it's not seen, not seen in the industry. I don't understand it, but again, try to keep things as simple as possible. This system, I think, came out beautiful. And again, I know the client will be happy. So I hope you guys learned something. If you do have any questions, uh, please don't be afraid to ask. Again, you can message me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com, or you could go to my eBay store at uh, eDealers Direct. I'll have the links below. Once again, to all my subscribers, I love you guys. I'll keep the videos coming. Um, and again, I, I do thank you all for your support. Take care.